Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see three different ways to create beautiful depth of field for your work. This method each has the advantage and disadvantage and you can then choose the method you want or you prefer for your project. And for this tutorial, I use a scene that you can of course find on my Patreon. Okay, let's go for the tutorial. Okay, so we are going to start directly with the classic method inside 3ds Max. We have the 3D scene with our rendering without depth of field and what we are going to do to activate it is already to check focus distance. We will not be able to adjust our focus area to decide where we want the sharpness. And with the film gauge we will be able to enlarge or reduce this area. I can now activate the depth of field and we can see that we have a nice blur effect directly with the focus on the sphere. I can decrease the film gate if I want, less blur in my scene. Or completely increase it if I really want to focus attention on one place. I can obviously modify the place of my focus. If in this example I prefer to be clear on my ground texture, it's up to you to see how you want to configure it. Okay, so here we're just starting to create a depth of field directly into this max. The advantage is that it will be perfect, but once the render will be done, you will not be able to change it. We will now see two methods to do this effect in compositing inside After Effects. So, I will go into V-Ray, render element, and add a V-Ray ZDEF pass. I go down in the menu, and we will configure the two values that you can see here, the min and the max. The first thing to do is to remove the depth from the camera. Open my render window. Launch a render. And select now the correct path. We can see here our path in black and white. And what we want is to recover information in the gray to be able to create a nice blur afterwards. We will therefore play with a distance value in min and max. I will for the max put a value of 100 for example. And we see that we already have much more information in the gradient. That's very good. I want to be with a little more contrast at the beginning and therefore put a higher value in the min distance. 15 cm will surely be fine. And it's perfect for me like that. Here it's what we want for the configuration of the Z-Pass. The last method to retrieve depth information takes a gun and it's perfect if you are in the array. You just have to go to command, render output, choose a folder and a name for your file, and save. Here orb, and choose the RLA file type. Save. Check the depth in the option and OK. And it's over. There's nothing else to do in 3ds Max. All you have to do to finish is just render as usual. And once it's finished, we will move on to compositing on After Effects. OK, so we are in After Effects and we are already going to import our files. We need RGB, the RLA, and the Z depth. Ok, so I'm going to select the RGB and create a new comp. We can see here that we have our image without any depth of field, so we will create it. I add my Z depth in the composition and I pre-compose it. It's already good like that, but if I want I can modify it by going to color correction and level. I can, if I want, adjust the contrast if I really need to. I now return to my basic composition. I add my Z pass and I will add an adjustment layer. Okay, so personally I create my depth of field with the Fresh Loop plugin because it works extremely well. I advise you if you can to get it. Otherwise, you can just use the camera lens blur of After Effects, which works also the same way but less well, unfortunately. Okay, so I add my depth of field effect. And in depth layer, I will select my Z depth path. I can increase the blur radius. And here we have already a very beautiful depth of field with a pretty blur. What is good with Fresh Luft is that we can select exactly where we want to be focused and it calculates that live. Maybe a bit strong. So I will lower the value to 20. Yeah, very good. What I can also do is add a key. Go forward in the timeline 
and select another place, maybe here. And if I run this short animation, we can see that we can directly configure the depth of field as well as the radius and more. And it adds the advantage of not needing to go back for a 3D rendering if you decide to change your depth of field. Ok, we will now see how to obtain the same result but with the RLA on which we have done nothing except just export it. So, I'm going to find the RLA file and create a new composition. If I go inside, we can see that it has created a file similar to the RGB and I will now go to 3D channel and select 3D channel extract. And you have to pay attention to see ZDEF to select. I will now pass all values to 0, so we are full grey now, and we will now decrease very slightly the black point. So maybe minus 50. And we can already see that we have started to see your sphere taking shape. Maybe minus 100. And yeah, it's already very good. I can just lower my value to minus 15 for the white point and we get exactly the same result as the ZDEF without having configured anything in 3ds Max. I can now go back to my main comp, activate the effect layer and I will now select the layer with the RLA. Oops, obviously you have to put it in the composition to see it. And now, as I said, I will select it. And you can see that it works perfectly. We have exactly the same result without configuring anything in 3ds Max. What is really cool with this method is uh, that you can adjust your pass, you can adjust the pass at any time to create the depth of field that you want. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. And you can, of course, follow me on Instagram and beyond and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for our next tutorial, guys. Bye.